in this section we shall only have the integer type of answers for the question following well let's proceed to question number 21 in question number 21 a satellite is revolving around the earth in an orbit of radius small r with time period of one hour if radius of orbit is decreased by one percent the decrease in time period in second is by Kepler's law we know that the square of the time period will be directly proportional to the cube of the radius that means we can write it as t square would be equal to k into r cube or differentiating this part finding the relative error and successively the percentage error we can write it as 2 delta t divided by t must be equal to 3 delta r divided by r multiplying both of these two part by 100 we are getting this value to be equal to delta r divided by r into 100 that is actually the percentage error in the radius so it's been given that it actually decreasing and this value is one percent so i can say it as delta t by t it is 3 into 1 divided by 2 into 100 now we need to find the decrease in time period in second so this is the value of the decrease in time period should i say it delta t is equal to 3 into 1 into 200 here and this is time period was it was one hour or i can say 36 0, 0 in seconds this one will cancel out so this is 18 18 into 3 that is 54 seconds that is the decrease in time period so for question number 21 we are getting 54 as the answer now we shall proceed to question number 22 here in question number 22, on dipping a capillary of radius 2r in water, water rises up to a height h and gravitational potential energy of the water in the capillary tube is u1. If a capillary of radius r and height h is dipped in water, then gravitational potential energy in capillary tube is u2. The u1 by u2 is nearly. We need to find this ratio. For the first given situation, if uh, this is the capillary tube, its height is sufficient and uh, the water rises here up to height capital H. Its radius being how much? 2R. So we can say H is equal to 2S divided by 2 rho GR or S divided by rho GR. Fine. And up to this much of the label here. Potential energy of this much part of the liquid, I can write it as U1 as uh, the volume of this much of the water. It is pi, radius being 2R, so it is 4R square, height is H into rho, this is the mass into G into H by 2. Fine. Now, for the other case, it's been said that uh, this time when a capillary which is having only h height outside the liquid that is actually dipped so this height itself is how much capital h and its radius was given to be r so here if the length of the tube would have been sufficient then height h would come out to be 2s divided by rho g r that is definitely greater than this capital h so what will happen here at this point the liquid will adjust its shape and the total height from here to here will finally be h only the liquid will not spill out from here so i would say the height of the liquid will be how much h only so this time the potential energy of the liquid in this capillary this is u2 it will be pi r square into h that is the volume into rho g and this height is h so it will be h by 2 we need to find the ratio of this part so i'll be getting u1 divided by u2 as look here this pi r square will cancel out i'll have four in numerator and rest of the portion from here to here this is exactly same so this is the only thing i'm getting as the answer so the ratio u1 by u2 is 0 4 that's the way i'll write it here 
So now let's proceed to next question that is question number 23. In question number 23, the system shown in figure is released from rest. The string and pulley are light and surface is frictionless. If the length of the string is L with Young's modulus Y and area of cross section is A, then elongation in a string is N MGL divided by 12 AY. Value of N is. First, let's try to find out the total elongation. Then we'll try to match out with the answer that is actually given here. So, whole of this system would accelerate in downward direction with acceleration A and that will be given as mg divided by 3m that is coming out to be g by 3. And from this equation now we'll try to find out what is the tension in the system. So for that I'll write the free body diagram of this portion as mg in upward side it is t or I would say mg minus t must be equal to mg by 3 or from here I am getting the value of t to be equal to 2mg by 3 that is actually the tension that is appearing in this string. So what is the level of stress here? Tension divided by area. So the extension I would say stress that means 2mg by 3a here the total length was L Young's modulus being y so this will be the extension. Now try to match this answer with the one given here. Actually in denominator we are having 12. So I will multiply this answer with 4 on both of the side. So extension I will be getting here as 8 mgl divided by 12 ay. Now this one is matching with the one given here and value of n is actually 8. So my answer for the value of n is 0 8. Now we shall proceed to question number 24. Here in question number 24, a uniform rod of mass m, length l and area of cross section a is hanging vertically from ceiling as shown. If Young's modulus of elasticity is y, the elastic potential energy stored in upper half of the rod is 14 m square g square l divided by n a y. The value of n is First, I will try to calculate the level of stress at any different point that is at a distance x from the lower point. So, let this is the point x here and this being the small region of delta x. Or I can write down the tension at x here as m l x into g or the level of stress at this point x here is would be equal to m g x divided by a into l. Now if I am taking a reason dx here the potential energy at this point how much it would be it is let's say du it should be taken as 1 by 2 stress into strain or 1 by 2 stress square divided by Young's modulus that is the potential energy density into volume of the considered part. So I would say 1 by 2 stress square it is m square g square into x square divided by a square l square here it will be Young's modulus here into volume of this part it is a into dx. This is a small potential energy we need to find the elastic potential energy in upper half only. So I will be integrating this portion from x equal to L by 2 to L. So the final potential energy will come out to be 1 by 2 A L square Y. In numerator part it will be mg whole square. Here it is x square dx. This integration will be carried out from x equal to L by 2 to L. So just make this calculation and we will be getting this answer as m square g square divided by 2 a L square y. Here it is x cube divided by 3. So 1 by 3 L cube minus L cube by 8. 
so potential energy is 7 m square g square l divided by 48 a y compare this answer with the one given here in numerator portion we see here as 14 so I can say if we multiply this term with two in numerator and denominator then I'll be getting the value of n to be equal to 96 fine this is 48 and I'll multiply this portion with 2 so I'll be getting the answer as 96 that's the answer for question number 24 now we shall proceed to final question of this paper that is question number 25 in question number 25, a uniform rope of mass m and length l is placed on a smooth horizontal surface with a small part hanging and rope is allowed to fall vertically. If area of cross section is A, maximum stress developed in rope during the motion is 3 mg divided by Na, the value of N is. Uh, there is slight calculation where we may prove the statement that when exactly the maximum stress and at which point it will be developing. Well, if we make such a calculation, we'll be getting a situation when exactly half of the string has slipped from the surface. At that instant, we'll be getting the maximum stress and that will also come out to be at this edge itself. So, taking that statement, when half of the string has slipped off from the surface, the acceleration of the system A would be mg divided by 2, that is the driving force here, and total inertia is m. So, we shall have g by 2 as the acceleration of whole of this portion. Okay, and as I said, the maximum tension will be at this point itself. So, now Taking the free body diagram of only half of this portion, if T is the tension here, I would say T is the tension that is driving the system with an acceleration of G by 2. Mass was already M by 2 for this portion. It is G by 2 or effectively the tension, that is the maximum value here, that is coming out to be Mg by 4. So, the maximum stress developed in the rope during the motion, this is the maximum tension just divide it by a this is the maximum value of the stress mg divided by 4a fine if i see the format of the answer that is actually given here there is a factor that is 3 in numerator so i'll simply multiply this term with 3 in numerator and denominator and i'll be getting 3 into mg well here in the question it is capital m that actually being given and we have just wrote the value in terms of small m. Well, that's not making any difference here. I'm just writing it down as capital M G itself. Fine. 3 M G. So this portion will also be multiplied by 3. So I'll be having here 12 into A. Now with the comparison, the value of A is coming out to be 12. So that's the answer for question number 25. With this, we are ending this paper. I hope you must have understood the solution and wish you all the best for your further preparation. Thank you and goodbye.